But first, is it time to admit that Brexit was just a big mistake? We want your calls on this 0207 862 The Prime Minister has been accused of wasting Brexit benefits with his own MPs claiming he's putting more burdens on businesses and damaging our economic vibrancy by adopting EU equality laws. At the same time, Brexit is one of the things being blamed for pushing Britain into recession. And a former Deputy Prime Minister, Lord Heseltine, Michael Heseltine, has said the decision to leave the European Union was an act of self-annihilation. Now, we thought we need to get some sort of balanced view of this. So uh, this is ChatGPT, right? So the, it's the old AI resource. And we, could, we thought we'd ask it, has it been a good idea? So yes, here you are, sir, in ChatGPT land. And we're going to see what it's made of. So I'll type in a question. I just press the green access, let's go button there, bang. And we get a chance to type our question in. Has Brexit, and I need to miss the, the misspelling. Oddly, it doesn't have Brexit in my in my dictionary. Weirdly, has Brexit been a success or a failure for the UK? We asked ChatGPT. Let's see the answer. So here, within one second, remember this is AI. The assessment of Brexit success or failure is subjective, and depends on various factors. Okay, greater sovereignty and control for Britain, but there are also economic challenges. Boom. Trade disruptions, geopolitical implications. Look at this, it's just exact it's frustrating this. So let's try something else. Is get a clearer answer. Is Britain's economy stronger now than it was in 2016? At least we can say that for definite. Okay, Chat GBT, do your thing. Britain's economy has experienced fluctuations. There was, again, it's both sides this. Since the Brexit referendum, there have been periods of growth and positive indicators low unemployment, etc. But there have also been challenges, there's that word again, including uncertainty surrounding trade, disruption in supply chains, and a bit of COVID as well. And then, it, yeah, I mean, the frustration of not getting an answer. Overall, whether Britain's economy is stronger now than in 2016 is a matter of debate and depends on the specific metrics and time frames considered. So there, that is, and no wonder she looks frustrated. That is all chat GPT had to offer. I wish I hadn't bothered, but I know what you think. I think you think it should have been great and it's not. I think it's a great opportunity. I think the vast majority of people who voted Brexit don't regret the vote. What they regret is the incompetence of this government. So it should have gone better. Properly. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity. They should have done it properly. And this story, about sort of just suddenly adopting a whole load of daft EU regulations without even discussing it and debating it and voting on it in the House of Parliament just shows what this government is about. They're just they're just still in the pocket of the EU. It's disgraceful. Well, I don't know what yeah. Now this is this is a particular thing to do with the European Court of Justice and and that basically some things have gone through which which needn't have gone through. And the bigger thought here, Gemma, is what we're still it's not working because we're still half in the eu but when we talk about these regulations usually they're just protections rights workers rights they're not really a big deal they, and on the whole they're good things that have been agreed by a whole cluster of countries for a reason so for instance we've just had divergence as um, told by defra from hazardous chemicals like is that a good thing is that a brexit win you know what makes me really sad no i want to answer not like jack gbt because if you look at Bloomberg, Reuters, um, the OBR, the IMF, Goldman Sachs, like they all admit that Brexit is a fundamental disaster because we have lost, lost 100 billion upwards in, in, in money and our GDP has gone down and we can all feel it, right? So inflation is up, we're in recession, our food prices. And when you produced that video for Leave EU, Richard, it was. It was a fib. You produced a video, look it up, right, on YouTube, and it's like, ooh, if you vote Brexit, everything's going to be like living in a spa, like Utopia. You'll be straight to the front Is of the queue the in the NHS. Is that the one with the spa in it? it pretty I much. Saw, I saw that video. That's a comedy video now, isn't it? The one where you say your, your hospitals will be empty. Will be low. Yeah, hospitals will be empty. Everything but I suppose that's beautiful. advertising, right? Look, the, the, the point is, if you're going to do a job, do it properly. We trusted the Tories to do the job properly, and fundamentally, they haven't. But I'm sorry, Gemma, all that stuff, all those people you've quoted, the Bloombergs, the Reuters, they all said... OBR. Right, the OBR, what? Is that, like, one of the worst forecasting organisations we've got that's the never IMF. accurate? 
again, Reuters, always, always wrong. Goldman Sachs. They, they said, it, let's take the city, they said 75,000 jobs would be lost in the city of London. They now admit, sheepishly, oh, it's about 7,500. They were completely wrong. Let's just get the facts. The facts, are, the facts are, our economy, since we left at the end of 2020, has grown faster than Germany, France and Italy. We're all sluggish because of completely different factors, mainly to do with high energy prices, net zero, raising taxes and not deregulating. There's a reason why the US is growing at 3% a year and we're not growing at all. It's because of cheap energy, daft, burdensome regulations getting in the way. All That's right. the reason so why. ironically, the only version of Brexit that, that like, could have been a win, which would have been awful, would be like the Liz Trust version. Deregulate everything. Make us like Singapore. Don't believe in the NHS. Singapore's, Singapore's, change, Singapore's, change Singapore's a very successful high-growth economy. Absolutely, but US. it's a very different way to the way that Brits like to live. And we like things well, like, we like the NHS. We like to live in and, and, and a lot of people voted for Brexit because they thought that all that money was going to be go going into the NHS, which was a complete and utter lie. Nonsense, Gemma. More money's gone into the NHS no. than even was talked about on the side I of the bus. I won't yes. have that, no, because you that absolutely figure... absolutely know that's right. No, that figure includes PPA, PPE Lane money and it also includes the £37 billion from Tess and Tress. No, they include that All in right. the overall figure. So you figure. say the side of the bus was right, was it? The, the, it turned out to be an underestimate because the budget then was about £120 billion. Now it's £180 billion. And yet the NHS has got worse. Nothing to do with Brexit because of incompetent, woeful right. management. Let's bring in Anne in, hang on, let's bring in Anne in Hertfordshire. Who's right on this, Anne? Yes, good morning. I morning. think the government are to blame. Now it's all going wrong. They're blaming Brexit. They couldn't run a primary school if they were in charge of it. They've got to run our country better. When things go wrong, like the, the NHS, with the boats, with everything in this country that's going wrong, with the mm. high energy prices, they're doing nothing about it. Oh, let's blame Brexit. It's all so, so what you think that Brexit could have worked, should have worked, but but we, the government we uh, tried it. as they, what, who said it fell apart in my hands is we that we should have uh, given it a go yeah but Anne, if you hamper trade and you put on um, tariffs on trade then the consumer yeah. gets higher food prices so bloomberg right. said 80% of inflation so our higher food prices is down to brexit rubbish well, well, now, I'm a consumer <laughs> and I'm fed up of trying to scrape together £45 extra a month because my local council have put my rent up and I'm a, pe I'm a disabled pensioner mm -hmm. and I'm having to scrimp and scrape to find that £45 a month or I'll get evicted. Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing. No, if, if, and and I've got to put this to Richard. They're not looking the people if, of this country. Richard, if Brexit was so good, why is Anne still struggling like this? Why is so many people struggling? Because it's nothing to do with Brexit, because the government's wasting huge amounts of taxpayers' cash on ridiculous things like net zero, raising taxes, raising wasteful spending, unnecessary regulations. Why is America doing so well? It's outside the European Union, it's got lower taxes. It's in America, it's miles yeah, away and it's from growing, our and nearest Gemma, trading It's growing block. at 3% a year when countries in the Under Eurozone, like Germany, is in recession, mm. deep recession. So, you know, the Eurozone is not some nirvana that you think it is, it's not. No. It's stagnating, it's going nowhere. Why do you want to so rejoin people something like you that's doing always, worse than we are? I think we should rejoin the single market and instantly our economy would get a massive growth oh, boost. Give Everybody me a knows so, that. And also, no, the they whole don't. idea. Why is Germany in recession, Gemma? Because Why is it in they recession? had an over reliance on Russian gas and they made some huge strategic area, uh, errors with their manufacturing and specifically Let me with their got energy. Expensive energy. And exactly. actually, it's nothing to do with Brexit, it's expensive measure, energy. If you only measure a country's success by things like GDP, actually, their quality of living is better than us per person. They've got way less food banks, their rent is down. Yes, it's much less than ours. Those are Nothing to do with Brexit. Those are completely different. Right, exactly. So that's what I'm saying is looking at Germany is irrelevant. The no, only thing you can look recession. at... No, the you, only thing you, you can you look at... You just banged Richard. on about economic figures, Gemma. Right. right. So right. what let, you let need to just, look at hang is... Hang on, let's the... just get another caller. Hang on. Jay in London, hi. You've got to break yeah, in I'm here, a... Jay. Who, who's in the right <laughs> here, Gemma or Richard? <laughs> we all know who's in the right here, Gemma. Well, you're not everyone says that, but go on. No, because everyone, everyone really wants to protect, protect their personal interests or their decisions before. No one wants to look silly now that they said Brexit was, um, was a good thing. That's what it is. Because like, like um, Germany said now, look in Germany. If you go to Germany now, you said, talk about recession, they're still living better than us. 
They still live a bit enough down there. Are they? Are they? I don't know whether they are or not. Okay. They are. And are the they? only thing you can look they at are. is Germany... Um, sorry, the UK in the EU versus the UK out, uh, outside the EU. Comparing us to apples and but bananas... we have had COVID since then. That's, that's throwing Absolutely. It, everybody all around the world had that. And you're correct, yeah. Jay. And I don't blame people for voting Brexit after watching videos like the ones that Richard produced. We're going to have to find this video because it was fake. a classic, yeah. Well, let, let, OK, Jay, you want to say any more? They did, not, they did not say as well that if we leave, leave the EU, we have uh, extra 350 million for the NHS. Where is that money? Well, well Richard has said that... that I've that... just confirmed, actually, Jay, that that money and more has been put into the NHS, which sadly is not... OK, so why are we still yeah, struggling? Yeah, that's, why is the that's... NHS still struggling? Because why the NHS, NHS is still wasting struggling? It. They're, spe because... they're spending the money badly, Jay. That's the reason why. Yeah, they are actually including the billions that they funneled into people. No, this is, the profit. current they, they annual are. budget, the they, they money have... was already spent. It's OK, they may that. have put more money in. It may not have been money that came to us as a result of leaving the EU. That We should probably say that. But anyway, uh, thanks, Jay. After the break, we'll take more calls on this. We've got more to say. Is it time to admit that Brexit might have been a mistake? 0207... I think it might have been a mistake now. 0207 862 See you shortly. Now, more calls on Brexit. Is it time to admit that leaving the European Union was a mistake? 0207 862 Or was it just that actually it just fell apart in the government's hands like everything else? Let's speak to Pat in Merseyside. Hi. Hello. <laughs> what do you think, Pat? Can we, do, can we now say it was a mistake or was it destroyed by other things? It was one of the biggest mistakes we've ever made. Uh, after COVID, we were very, very low and we're even lower now. The shops, everything's going up. Every day there's mm. something going up. Mm -hmm. I agree with the ladies that rang in and all the people that rang in and Gemma on the panel. Um, I voted to come out. I'm sorry I did that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, if I had my time. Well, let, let Richard re try and reassure you here, Pat. Yeah, look, Pat, the, the point is that it's a great opportunity, but the government hasn't done what they said they were going to do. They haven't reduced taxes, they haven't cut unnecessary regulations, they haven't taken advantage, they haven't controlled our borders so that actually we can grow wages for British people. Uh, These are all the opportunities. How's that, Pat? Uh, mass, mass immigration well, has made much more pressure on Pat. public services, Pat. One of the Pat. greatest statesmen, Mr Heseltine, I've known him since he was about 14. His uncle was our local butcher on Merseyside, Arthur Heseltine. And if you listen to that man, how he never got to be prime minister, I don't mm. know. Mm. He's one of the most honourable. I've never voted Conservative, but if uh, if he were ever to be prime minister, I think I would have. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK. Listen to well, the statesmen. They know what's going on in absolutely. the country and they could run the country better than it's being run now. Mm. Mm. And he really tried, as did people like Ken Clark. But and then you look at farming, right? They've lost their subsidies. They've lost their protections. They are struggling because we used to get perhaps Romanians coming over for three months, doing the jobs and going home. Now they're having to get expensive visas. They're going overseas. So the idea was ever going to really curb immigration. You think immigration Jim is wrong about farming? Joke. She's completely wrong about farming. There are different farming subsidies out there that actually should probably be increased. But look, what's, a lot of the subsidies are going into rewilding, which is ridiculous. We should be using our no, productive farmland Richard. for growing farmland. That's what the Tories have done. It gets and, to and, the point. It's you're like no, gaslighting. You're completely unaware, clearly, that there's a seasonal agricultural worker scheme where people can come in, they can pick fruit, they can help with that. And maybe... And that, that's what's going on so, at the moment, Gemma. Are you unaware of this? No, I'm not well, unaware why'd of you it. Just claim, so because why'd you just claim I was listening no to a farmer trying to talk to Jacob Rees-Mogg. It was painful. And he was saying, we are trying to grow vineyards. We cannot get the seasonal workers from Europe, which was just easy, right? It was frictionless. And now we're having to go to Afghanistan and Uzbekistan, all these places, and issue expensive visas at a cost to us. It's a lot more hassle. We can't get the workers. We've lost our subsidies and we've lost our protections. And like you, he's just going, no, that, that, that's not true. Like, listen to people who actually right. do the job. Let's bring in Kenny in Glasgow. Kenny, do you think there's a chance Brexit could work out if we leave it a bit? Yeah, I, I believe it should do. Um, but when you consider when we joined the EC or the EU as it was then, back in the 70s, we had uh, probably about a 7% growth, give or take. And in joining the EU, you see, overnight, we had a negative growth and a massive recession we didn't come out of until the late 80s. <laughs> well, I haven't uh, yeah. expected mm. a recession now. And we're not even, nobody's given it a chance. We've had COVID. We've had a crap government, to be honest, managing it. Let, let's, <laughs> let's have somebody manage it properly. 
and see how it goes. Well, yeah, but you see, when no one was told if you vote for Brexit, it might be a catastrophe. They were told, you know, if you vote for it, it's going to work. Yeah. I think um, common sense must to, should prevail that we're with no, And it's true, this is probably a hundred year thing. We may not know till oh, after we're great. dead. Well, I can't Come wait on. to be dead and really enjoy it and my kids be dead. It's great. It's going really well for them as hey, well. Hey, They've lost Gemma, all their Gemma, He's going to cheer you up, let's Gemma. Let's just go back to Germany, which is in recession. You love right? talking about yeah, Germany. Because, the because old it Germany completely undermines your hopeless case. No, it Germany doesn't. is in recession. It's doing worse than we are. It's the biggest economy in the Eurozone. And that proves my point. It's got nothing to do with Brexit. It's because of over regulation, over taxes, and the madness of I net zero. I absolutely love it. This is what they do. Andrew Neil tried to do it on Twitter. He got community noted. But the German what about and it's what you do to try and gaslight us again. Are you denying Germany's that... in recession? No, absolutely not. Well, no, I rest my absolutely. case. Absolutely. Oh, it's ridiculous. Well, it may, but, but... It's so unnuanced. We know that the reason Germany are in recession, and you know as well, is because of their over reliance, which was a massive mistake right, on Russian you said that. gas. Okay. Thank you, Kenny. James in Dorset. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, sorry, you took, caught me by surprise there. Eh? Well, um, oh, God, um, really? Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to start by saying I have massive respect um, for Gemma. I, I just think she's she's incredible. And uh, anyway, big fan. Um, I'm a small business owner. And are you there? Yeah, well, yeah we're, we're actually listening. That's what's, uh, how it works. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I'm a small business owner and I take past events throughout the year. I know probably four or five hundred business owners. And when I say a business owner, I'm just a, a small sole trader. I sell prints, frames, at events throughout the year, flower yeah. shows, that kind of thing. And pretty well every cost of mine material wise has gone up since Brexit um, because a lot of it comes from abroad. Um, glass, my moulding, and so I've kind of been... I would love to buy stuff in the UK, but obviously it's a time and a half more, and so I try, I try, try and keep my prices. And Where, when I where speak are you to importing others, from? Other EU countries? Other, other EU countries and countries that, that the product comes via France because it comes over on containers. Yeah. Richard, that is and a problem. Let's just get, let's try look, Richard on that. No, no, no. Look, there's a free trade agreement between oh. us and the EU, uh, yeah. so there are not tariffs on goods that come. Why from the is he having so, to pay more then? Because of other factors such as energy costs. It's got nothing. There are no tariffs. <laughs> is it, Gemma, I, Gemma, don't lie no, to the people, Gemma. The, there are no tariffs. Wow. There are no tariffs on goods between the EU and the UK. Is this that is correct what or not? Brexiteers who like yourself, the charlatans that sold it in, say James has just explained about his small business, and in but the break it, I said to you about small businesses being hampered. And you said verbatim, well, small businesses are only 10% of businesses. And no, I was like, oh, I right. didn't say that, Gemma. Again, don't lie. What I said was the regulations that we haven't taken advantage to deregulate is the issue. Right. There are no so tariffs the between the EU and the UK. No, we, I remember we had P Peter Bone came in and he did this, this uh, uh, former Wellingborough MP, did the, took this line. And I looked it up afterwards and it seems that what causes the problem, James, is, is paperwork and checking and regulatory hassle. Um, hassle. Is that right, James? Yes, it is. I mean, I, I, it, I'm not the one who has to deal with that, but the companies that I'm buying the stuff of have all said their costs have gone up and the red tape and whatever else. So I'm yeah. myself so it might not, be, not... So both things can be true. You might be paying more, but there might be no tariffs. So they've worked out a way of, of doing a over. And that is true because our ridiculous civil servants have unnecessarily imposed extra paperwork that we don't need to do, mm. checking goods coming across. For example, it was just recently, when I was on a few weeks ago, we've added an extra level of, of tariffs on, on certain fruits and vegetables coming... Why are coming. you surprised that we don't have the benefits of membership anymore when we're not members? Again, I just go back to my point. Germany's in recession. Yeah, you, oh, you said that's that. the only you point you've got. That. But, but I'm going to retweet everybody the, 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 the answer that because, you do. It's because... on Twitter. It's beautiful about what to do to the whataboutery of Germany. I'll okay, all right, well, we've had because Germany. Because right, right. Gemma. That's no, why you hate but, it. But, I, but oh, isn't, it, isn't it the case? That, so I'll just give an example from home. During COVID, my, my youngest daughter set up a little business selling, selling jewellery. And, I mean, I just watched it from a distance and she actually started to, to do quite a lot of business. And what I discovered was stuff was bouncing back from EU countries. So she was, and it's a bit heartbreaking because she was 14. So she was sending stuff to, to particularly Germany, actually, and it was coming back because of some sort of regulatory thing. And it might have nothing to do with tariffs, but it's just that they don't like us anymore. 
And, and you know, that, that is a question, that, uh, the issue of regulations... But we is... can't make them like us if they don't. It's not a question of liking, it's just a question of properly implementing the free trade agreement that exists just... between How's... the European Union and the UK. That's mm. the issue, and it's our civil servants that have imposed unnecessary regulations on goods coming from the EU, which is why people with small businesses who are suffering those sort of things, that's like our just... stupid yeah, civil I, servants. I, I think it was happening at the German end. Roy in Wolverhampton, what would you like to say? Whose side are you on here? I'm on the people who voted out, you see, because Dave Cameron gave us the vote and yep. he didn't like the answer we gave him. So all we've heard since is crying and crying. Now, I didn't vote on what people told me. I vote on what I saw. And, you know, the, the will of the people, no matter what anybody says, was to come out. Now, mm -hmm. we gave them back their country. We gave the government back their country and they can't run it. No, we're all looking on and seeing what's going on. And do you really think Europe would want us back in after all this? Well, maybe not. Maybe, got not. To run the maybe not. Maybe they wouldn't. It's maybe interesting, wouldn't. the will of the people thing. The will of the people right now. There's a poll on GB News, your favourite. 92% of people said they'd rejoin. 92? Yeah, on GB News. What? Oh, look, come on. The polls, okay. just before the referendum, just to remind people, the polls said that actually we were going to stay in. OK. The polls not always Let, wrong. Let's have, let's have a, a, a think about all of that. Thank you, Roy. Thanks for all our calls. We've got to press on now.